This is the Intertech IM1 Pocket, a tiny PC case that fills slightly over 21 liters. So this piece of German engineering is just like this far away from being accepted as a small form factor case. But at the same time, this is Micro ATX, it has big boy GPU support, ATX power supply support, and it looks good. This episode is brought to you by CDCovers.com. CDCovers offers a wide variety of software or game keys for a fraction of the usual retail price. You can get your usual PC game codes or even library codes for things like Steam, Uplay and Origin. But the most important part for us are the software codes. Here we can get software activation codes for things like MS Office or Windows 10 for a ridiculously cheap price. And right now you can also use the promo code TS20 to get a 20% discount to make the already cheap Windows 10 license even cheaper. If you want to get that nasty activation message away, make sure to head down to the links in the description below and don't forget to use the promo code TS20 for a 20% discount. Right off the bat, versatile. This has to be one of the most versatile cases I had my hands on until this day, which is also why today we'll go over the most complicated hardware compatibility list ever. But let's not jump ahead and first take it apart. Both side panels are detachable by simply pulling on the small indentations on the back. The top and bottom panels are almost the same. Just unscrew the thumb screw in the back and pull it away. And voila, stripped naked I am one. Now, already here you can see that there is a lot going on in here, so let's boil it down component by component. As mentioned before, even if the size may make you believe otherwise, it is still compatible with the Micro ATX form factor. For the GPU length, it is a bit straightforward. You have four reattachable PCIe brackets that allow for up to 335mm long GPUs, so even big boy 3090s can fit in here. Additionally, you have two vertical PCIe brackets, though these limit the maximum GPU length to 245 and you will need to bring your own PCIe riser. From here on, everything will be connected over multiple ifs. For the CPU, you can go with a up to 155mm high cooler. That is, if you mount the GPU horizontally. If you want to switch it around, you will limit the cooler to 88mm as the GPU will be sitting in front of it. The same limitation applies to the PSU because you can go with SFX as well as ADX power supplies. Already pre-installed, we have an SFX bracket in the very front of the case. Now, if you want to go with SFX power supplies, we can simply screw it into the bracket, connect the power cable which is already pre-installed, but because stuff would be too easy, you can choose between the original position next to the motherboard tray and the front side of the case. For ADX power supplies, we have to completely remove the SFX bracket, mount the PSU inside of the ATX bracket by pushing it in and up, and then screw it in from the top. Now, already by looking at the location, you can see why there are so many ifs. If we go with an ATX power supply, Intertech generally sets the GPU to be maximum 245mm long. Though this will depend on the actual length of the power supply and where exactly the cables are coming out. Alternatively, you can also just go with an SFX power supply and go with the full 355 because the PSU will never stand in its way. So from the manual, ADX power supply 245, SFX power supply 355, vertically mounted GPUs 245mm no matter what. But after testing, horizontally mounted GPUs may even be 355mm long while using ATX, but only if they are really short and none of the cables are standing in its way. The same applies for SFX power supplies and vertically mounted GPUs. If you do not put anything in front of it, you will actually be able to put it in. If this wasn't complicated enough, let's get to the fans and hard drives. To start off easy, there is space for two 2.5 inch drives on the front panel by simply placing them in behind it and then screwing them in from the front. The same applies for the 80mm fan spot in the back though this one comes at the cost of the vertical GPU option. But let's be honest, who owns 80mm fans anyway? Now it will be complicated. Inside of the IM1 we have three fan slash hard drive brackets. The top one, the bottom one and the central one. Each of them being removable with a couple of screws. Now, on top of each of those brackets we can mount either hard drives or fans. The top and bottom one supporting two drives or fans, while the central one can hold onto two fans or two 2.5 inch drives, 
but only one three and a half inch drive. On a side note, no, I did not stupidly quote the manual. You cannot stack two and a half inch drives right next to each other un until you fill the whole bracket. The space in between is just too big. Though I'm sure you could get something together and make it happen, just not out of the box. Then, to make it even more complicated, you have an additional 2.5 or 3.5 inch spot on top of the SFX power supply holder. Though don't forget that this is only usable if you use SFX power supply. So completely filled out, we are looking at a theoretical maximum of 9 2.5 inch drives if used with an SFX power supply and 8 with an ATX. For 3.5 inch drives we have 2 spots in the bottom, 2 in the top and 1 in the center and the potential one on top of the SFX bracket, so either 6 or 5 depending on your configuration. For the fans we only have the spots on the brackets, 2 on each, so a total of 6 120 spots and of course the 80 spot in the back. But that's only the case for SFX power supplies. While using ADX, you are missing out on one of the spots at the top. The two central spots have a similar requirement. These only work with horizontal GPUs. If you want to go vertically, you will inevitably sacrifice these two. Now, if you would go by the manual, you would miss out on another feature, because those are 140 fans. Even if the manual and product page state otherwise, you are able to fit two 140 fans on the central bracket. A small yet important information. And now let's get to the one big issue I have with this case, water cooling. Page 14 of the manual eloquently explains how to install the radiator on the bottom fan drive mount. The bottom one. This will kill your pump. Sure, they never specifically say all in one, and if you do a custom loop and you have a reservoir at the top of, of some sort and you bleed everything out, you will be fine. But most people will use an all-in-one and this method of installation will kill most people's pumps. So don't, don't do that. What bothers me the most is... What bothers me the most about this is that they went pretty much all in and explained how to install basically every component inside of this pretty thorough manual. So, just by judging that, it seems like this is the only position where you can mount a radiator. But it is not. The very first page of the manual even says that you can mount a up to 240 radiator on the central bracket. It's actually 280, but okay. So, they go the extra mile and explain how to mount a hard drive or a fan on here, but completely ignore water cooling, while they explain how to install a radiator on the worst possible position, which will definitely do harm to your pump or thermals within a short period of time, which doesn't make sense to me. But what makes me furious is that they completely forgot about one really cool feature of this case, which will also save them with that dumb bottom radiator position. Just unscrew the I.O. panel by unscrewing both screws, put it back in at the bottom because the hooks and the screw holes and the threads are already there. Take the, take the bottom part and install that one at the top. Flip it around and boom, reverse build. And now the really stupidly mounted radiator is mounted at the very best position, but absolutely zero mentions about this in the manual or the product page. It's, it's incredible to me. What makes things a bit worse is that once you put every panel back on there, you will not see any difference because it, the whole case is symmetrical in every direction. Okay, with all of the water cooling stuff said, I also have to say I believe that this case is not built for water cooling. Sure, you can cram a radiator in there, but they pretty much jumped over this topic in the manual and left out many relevant things. And I think that this is a subconscious way of saying, yes, you can, but don't. This becomes even more clear once you really try to get a red in here. Let's take the Kraken X53 RGB and the wrongly mounted radiator at the bottom. Or the top one, if you would follow the reverse approach, it wouldn't change anything. Yes, this GPU will not be going in there. So I read at this point we have to make sure to use a very thin radiator. And if you would take the alternative way of mounting it in the center, the results are just as bad. Sure, I was able to cram that Kraken in there, but 
I wasn't able to perform the benchmarks because the tubes were either bent to such a degree that they were blocking the fan or they were severely pressing on the GPU, almost breaking my 2080 Super's PCIe port. The only way which makes mounting a radiator that thick possible is to use the vertical GPU option while doing it in a reverse build. At that point you would have the clearance for basically every all-in-one out there, though you lose the central bracket and the stuff that can be attached to it. So all in all I did my fair share of tries when it comes to water cooling and what I found can generally be summarized with one word. Don't. I believe this is supposed to be air-cooled, so you've been warned. Okay, with the whole compatibility stuff out of the way, I also did some thermal testing, but let's first watch something enjoyable. So, coming to the thermals. Actually, they are pretty good. We got fresh air from the bottom for the GPU, fresh air from the side for the central fans, a big outlet at the top, and a couple of mini spots here and there. So, when it comes to potential, there is a lot. So, let's test that. We use our Ryzen 3700X at 4.3 GHz and 1.4 volts on the V-Core, paired with an EVGA 2080 Super. In order to curl everything down, we used the Noctua NHU9S Chromax Black and filled every fan spot with Arctic P12s. Basically a mini non-RGB full black power machine. After hitting the CPU pretty hard and letting all of the fans spin at 100% fan speed, the 3700X did at 85 degrees C. And that's quite impressive because while doing the NHU9S review, we had it running at the exact same clock speeds, but inside of the IM1, with help of the 6P12s, it is 3 degrees cooler. Nice. Adding Firmark 1080p 8xA8 to the game, the GPU stayed at 75 degrees C, while the CPU got a bit harder to 92 degrees C. All of these stems are quite impressive in comparison to an open air scenario. The main problem with small cases is usually a lack of air, but because the fans inside of the IM1 are positioned just a few centimeters away from the components, they are basically just blasting air straight into them. But I also wanted some real world numbers, so I ran Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the highest with TAA, which let the CPU always stay underneath 83 degrees C, while the GPU never got harder than 73. Pretty respectable numbers, I must say, especially because the case is so small and I overclocked the crap out of the 3700X. Overall, I do think the IM1 is incredibly versatile and can contain a surprising amount of fans and drives. Actually, pretty much unmatched considering the size. On the cooling potential, I do have to admit that I did not do it full justice. In the end, 155mm is pretty good for such a small case and... To be honest, I tried fitting in the Darkrock Pro 4 in here, and it was like this close to getting in, so the 155mm are probably a bit underrated, and you should be able to cram in a NHU 12. I, I just cannot test it, but something like that would most surely severely improve CPU thermals. On the water cooling, as I said, it works with a very thin radiator, like a deep cool or cooler master, whatever. But as soon as you have a thick radiator, like an arctic liquid freezer or thick fans, like on a NZXT Kraken, you either have to go back to using an APU or you will bend something. You can always fall back to the vertically mounted GPU if, if nothing else is standing in the way, but in the end I do believe that this is made for air, so maybe just stick to that. On the honorable mention side, instead of some lazy ass bag of screws, Intertech went all in and provides a box of screws while naming each of them. Nice. The I.O. is composed of two USB 3.0, a audio in and out, and the usual buttons. Not the most up to date, but still very much acceptable. There is an optionally available glass side panel, though this will cost you the central bracket because either you will choke the fans to death or who wants to see the backside of a drive anyway, so... And last but not least, build quality. Everything in here is made out of thick metal, no cheap plastics, almost everything closes down with a click-in system and 
the overall strength and touch and feel, it, it's, it's a good, great case. For me it was pretty fun to, to have this case on my hands. I always wanted to try out the Cooler Master NR200 and this is definitely going into the same direction, if you couldn't tell until now. But at the same time they made it a bit beefier, gave it micro ATX support, which I just generally prefer, and in the end they just ended up with a beefed up steroid version of the NR200, so I pretty much like that. But to summarize the Intertech IM1, I think the case is pretty cool, the compatibility list definitely blows away the NR200, everything is made out of sturdy material, you can reverse the case if you really wanted to do that, and air, basically everywhere. On the negative side I can only come up with basically water cooling, it just doesn't work that good, you basically have just one installation option which then involves using the case in a manner which isn't explained in the manual, so just stick with air. On the could have been better side, I can't really say water cooling, cause no matter what you do it won't be perfect. You could mention the reverse build, maybe, but one thing that should be changed is the demagnetization feature of this case. The screws for the GPU are hidden inside of this small lid, which is magnetically held by the rest of the case. Now, if I try to screw in something, I am physically unable to do that properly, because the magnet is so strong it just attracts the screwdriver. And if we remember what they taught us in physics, jamming a magnetic object against something makes the magnet weaker. Rubbing it against another magnet basically too. Now combine both things and my handy dandy be quiet screwdriver is no longer what it used to be. So either use your weakest and cheapest screwdriver for this step or make sure to have one of these at hand in order to magnetize it again with some non-consensual screwdriver action. Now to quickly go over the price. As of writing the script the case is going for around 56 euros which considering the feature set, versatility, choice of material and all of this is metal, and form factor is just incredibly affordable. Usually smaller cases like this are pretty expensive and for my part I think 56 euros is a really good price tag. Okay, this should be it for the Intertech IM1. At this point I would like to thank Intertech for sending us over this pretty cool case. Of course I will leave manufacturing links and whatnot down in the description below. But if you don't know what to watch next, maybe have a look at the Laser 3D LZX8. That one is made out of wood.